In this video tutorial, we will show you the necessary steps to integrate the Resonon Airborne Hyperspectral Imager to your UAV. This includes mounting the system, mounting the GNSS antenna, and supplying power. There are a few options for mounting the system depending on your specific drone, but we will start with the gimbal option. Most gimbals have a plate or dovetail for attaching a camera. Resonon's airborne system easily attaches to these plates using the corner 20 threaded holes and appropriate length screws. The dovetail is then slid into the mating mount on the gimbal. Once in place, balance the system according to the gimbal's instruction manual. Typically, this involves sliding the payload in all three dimensions until a neutral position is found. Then, tune the gimbal motors according to the manufacturer's suggestions. The best way to use the Pika L system with a gimbal is to operate the gimbal in inverted mode as shown here. It is easier to balance in this configuration. While gimbals are great for stabilizing the imaging system, they add weight and complexity to the system. Additionally, they can complicate the installation for dual antenna GPS IMUs, like the Ellipse D, as the yaw axis must stay perfectly aligned with the antenna. For these reasons, it may be desirable to forego a gimbal and mount the system directly on the drone. Most drones have a mechanism for connecting payloads or gimbals underneath the drone, ideally with some amount of vibration isolation. You will need a mating connector for the mechanism. Contact your drone manufacturer for a mating connector if you do not have one. Shown here is a mating dovetail for a DJI M600. This piece attaches to Resonon systems in different ways depending on the specific system. Here is the dovetail on a Pika IRL. Here is the dovetail on a Pika L. Once attached to the Pika Caddy, connect the system to the drone. Resnon offers a specific mount for the DJI M300 drone for both the Pika L and Pika IRL airborne systems. This system utilizes the DJI dual gimbal mount hardware. To mount this system on the M300, first loosen the screws on the mating pucks. Then twist the pucks into place and make sure they lock in place. Then tighten the screws. As a reminder, you should always tether your payload. The next step is to mount the GNSS antenna. Depending on the drone, there can be different options. The important points are to position the antenna high up on the drone and away from any sources of noise, and to always use the included ground plane underneath the antenna. One option is to use a folding mast, as shown here. Contact your drone manufacturer for antenna mounting options and components. Included in the Resonon M300 kit is an antenna mount which also serves to hold a battery for powering the system. It is recommended that the excess cable be cut from the antenna and a new SMA connector is attached. It is also possible to buy a connectorized antenna and SMA cable of the correct length. See the SBG manual for compatible antenna. Some customers choose to leave the cable and coil the excess, securing it to the drone. If this is done, make sure that the coils are away from any source of electronic noise. For the dual antenna ellipse D option, the two antenna need to be mounted at least one half meter apart, preferably more. Both antenna cables need to be the same length and the antenna need to be positioned the same way. See the ellipse user manual for more details. The next step in the installation process is to run power cables to the necessary components. Resonon Airborne systems ship with power pigtails for all the necessary connections. But due to differences in drone power connectors, cable lengths, and battery complications, it is up to the user to connectorize the pigtails specific to your drone or battery. If your spectral imager is a USB model, you only need to run power to the flight computer. If your spectral imager is a Gig E model, you'll need to power the imager as well. Power can be pulled from some drones or can be supplied by a battery. Check your Resonon Airborne user manual for the specific voltage and power needs of your system. The next step is to make sure that all the necessary cables are connected. This includes a USB-C cable between the SSD and the flight computer, 
the antenna cable to the GPS, power, and the optional downwelling irradiance sensor USB cable. For USB imagers such as the Pika XC2, connect a USB 3.0 cable between the imager and the blue port of the flight computer. For Gig E imagers, an Ethernet cable is needed between the imager and the flight computer. The next step is to configure the GPS IMU for the installation, which is covered in another video. Thanks for watching. Check out Resnon's YouTube channel for more videos and subscribe to stay up to date with new content.